Hi everyone, today is going to be the last day, the sixth uh, video in this series on type level programming uh, using length index vectors. So the idea here is that we're taking the normal uh, functions over lists, everything from data.list, and trying to convert it over to work over length index vectors. And, and we've seen a bunch of different techniques come up over the past few weeks. Um, let's see. Uh, the, the key bit here, so you don't have to watch all the previous videos to understand this one. The key bit is going to be this vec type here. And oh, I'll return to that in a sec. But today's focus is going to be on writing special custom GADTs just to deal with a few functions that really benefit from that. So that's going to be the subject of, of today's video. Um, this vec type here, right, it stores the length of the list. It, it denotes that in its own type, right? So an empty vector, nil, its length is zero. Whereas a cons, we're going to take some vector of length then and add one onto it. And that's our, our fundamental idea. So we've seen how this could be really, really useful. Um, but today, I want to start with, where is it down here? Um, and by the way, the, the, the code that we're seeing is linked in the description, so you can follow along. The first one we're going to look at today is the indexing operator, bang, bang. So normally, bang, bang looks like it has a type like this. Um, and, and it allows us to look up some elements in the list. But this type is actually pretty bad because it says that int could be anything, right? It could be negative even, that doesn't make any sense, or it could overshoot the length of the list. This is no good. Um, of course, we're going to use vectors here. So, oh, of course, it wasn't to A, to, to list of A, it's just to A, right? So this is normally an unsafe operation. Um, with vectors, we're going to have vec NA and return an A. But now we need to somehow say that this input int here, it can't just be any int. Well, one small improvement we could make is we could make it a nat, and that means that it has to be zero or greater. So that's already an improvement, right? It has to be a non-negative number. But it's still, we could overshoot. That's not really what we're trying to do here. Instead, we wish to say that this is a number that is um, uh, strictly less than the length of the list, because we're going to use zero indexing. And so we want to think about how could we create such a type that we know is going to be less than, than some number n. So uh, traditionally, such a type, let me comment this out so I can com compile. Um, traditionally, such a type is called fin. Excuse me. <coughs> and so we write fin. Now, the, this, this thing is going to be less than some fixed number. So I already know that fin has to be indexed by that limit. Um, and so we're going to say that this goes from nat to type. It's going to be indexed by a nat. It's called fin, by the way, standing for a finite set, right? Because every fin, uh, given, given the number n, there's a finite number of them. Um, and then, so we're going to have data fin n where, now we have to think a little bit. Well, what we want to say is, is that this, is, this has to somehow be like a natural number. So there's going to be some zero and some successor, right? We know that the data associated with a fin is going to be some number. Um, and so I'm going to say f0 and f suck here, and then we can work out the types. So f0, well, that makes sense as long as my index isn't 0, right? The idea here is that a fin, the value of fin n is strictly less than n. So if I have 0, then that means that whatever my index is, it has to be something greater than 0. In other words, it has to be the successor of something. So I'm going to write here fin suck n. And that this means that f0 is any fin as long as it's not fin of 0. We can't have fin of 0. Right? That's going to be an empty type. Um, for f suck here, well, what is this going to be? Well, this is going to be some fin, and then we're going to add 1 to it. Um, but when we, we add 1, we actually can increase the limit of, of how high it can get. And so this is going to go from fin n to fin suck n. And, and in this way, we know that whatever we construct with f0 and f suck, it always has to be less than n. Uh, so admittedly, coming up with this is a little bit tricky. Um, I happen to know it in advance. We're going to do another example later that I don't know off the top of my head. So we'll, we'll see a little bit more creative uh, thought there. So we have this fin type. Now I can give the proper type uh, for indexing. Excuse me. <coughs> um, OK. So here we have this. Now, what am I going to say? Well, um, if my index is 0, then, uh, oh wait, I've done this backwards. I've done this backwards. You've probably been thinking that the whole time. This is all backwards. Yes, of course, we have the vector first, and then we have the index. Of course, we do. Um, so here, right? if I have x cons x's, 
And then I'm going to index out the, the first element from that. So that's index out f0. That's going to be x. And if I have x cons x's, and I index out the successor, whoops, the successor of some number f, that's just x's index out f. So let's give that a try. So this compiled, we have OK1 OK module loaded, but there's some warnings. Oh, define but not use the stuff. So let's fix that and get rid of these things. Um, OK1 OK module loaded. Excellent. Um, and so, so we see here how we can do safe indexing using bang bang just like this. OK, that was pretty easy. Um, now let's look at something a little harder. Um, so all of these are going to also use fan, but I want to look at, 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 at these down here. So span and break and partition. So these need custom GADTs to encode the right conditions. So let's take a look at span. Um, so as I, as I hinted before, um, here we really don't, I don't, I don't know off the top of my head exactly what the answer is. So we'll, we'll figure it out. So let's think, well, what's, what's span? So let's import qualified data.list and let's look at data.list. Whoops, uh, spell it correctly. Dot span. Um, okay, so it's going to have a type that looks like this. So I can already write that out. So we, here we're going to take span, takes some predicate over a's, a, a are a bool. Now we're going to take a vector of a's. And here in the output, well, very naively, I could think this, but that's clearly not right because it says that my two output vectors have to be the same length as each other and as my input. So that's that's definitely not going to be the case, right? So if we don't remember, so span is a function that we want to we want to sort of take the want to count uh, not count we want to accumulate all of the elements in the prefix of a collection that meets some predicate and then break it at that point and um, and then return the rest of the list. So we know that. All of these elements here in my first return value, all of them are going to satisfy the predicate, and the first element of the rest of the list does not satisfy the predicate. That's how span works. Um, but as we see here, this isn't quite right. We can't say vec na. So I could use my old friend evec and say that there exists some length, and that's kind of OK, except it still doesn't tell the whole story. And that's because I know something about the lengths of these two outputs. I know that they have to add up to be this n here. Um, so actually, even though this is supposed to be a custom GADTs, I wonder if I can't do it like this. This would seem to be a good way forward. Let's see where that, where that brings us. Um, so here we're going to have span and then p for the predicate. And then here, if my input is empty, well, that's going to be easy. I want both my outputs to be empty. Already I've run into trouble. Let's see. Could not deduce m equals 0 from m plus n equals 0. Um, so we know that m plus n, well, this is actually true. right? If m plus n equals 0 and we only have natural numbers, then surely m is 0. So that looks like I have an opportunity to write a proof. It's going in a slightly different direction than I expected, but that's OK. Um, so m plus n 0, I'll call it. And then let's see what I want to say here. I want to say that if m plus n equals 0, then I'm going to get m equals 0. That's what I wish to prove here. And if I just try writing equals refl, now that's not going to work because we, we can't deduce that. Instead, we have to do a little proof here. Um, and so let's see. What's the proof going to be on? Well, in this case, I think the proof has to be on n. Um, hmm. But I think actually this is going to be easier to prove about n than it will be about m. Let's try this. So now we can't prove that n equals 0 from the context m plus n equals 0. So here, now I know what to do. I'm going to recur on m. So if m is in fact 0, then hooray, we're good. And Oh, look at this. We're not getting any error saying that we've missed a case. And that's because GHC is clever enough to know that if m is in fact the successor of something, then m plus n does not equal 0. So this is my nice little proof that n uh, equals 0. But down here, I needed to prove it about m. So that means I need to prove that plus is commutative. So let's prove that. So plus is commutative. So now we're going to have um, uh, if m. Well, rather, 
m plus n equals n plus m. That's what I wish to prove. Now, if I just write plus com equals ruffle, of course, we don't know that this is true. We have to do yet another inductive proof. So once again, we're going to do this by induction on m. So now if m is 0, I still don't quite have it. I need, now need to know that n plus 0 is really n. Uh, well, to do the, to get this to work, we're going to have to bring these into scope. We're going to do n first because we'll see why in a little bit, but that's going to turn out to be convenient. Um, and then here I have to use that proof that I wrote previously. So if I say m plus 0, um, but I don't want it to be about m, I need this to be about n. Oh dear, so I'm going to need not just n and m, I'm going to need s naps for both of them because I need to end up occurring down both. So here, this is s0. I'm going to call this n because it's the singleton for n, so I'll just call it n, which is the same thing. So if I say m plus 0 n of ruffle to get ruffle, OK, one module loaded. Excellent. Um, so let's just remind ourselves, what is the type of m plus, uh, sorry, m plus 0? It looks like this, right? Given the singleton for m, I can now prove that m plus 0 equals m. Um, and then let's try another one. We have, to, we have this other case here. So plus com of successor of m prime n equals ruffle. Let's try that. That's no good. So here I have, I have to prove this thing of an n plus suck n1, and then I have to pull the suck out front. Well, quite conveniently, I have a function that does that. It's m plus suck. So I say case m plus suck. And then the first thing I need to pass is going to be the um, argument on the left. In this case, plain old n. So I can pass in n here. And then now, uh, or rather here, I need to pass in the type argument of the thing on the right. Well, this is actually going to be the um, uh, type variable associated with m prime. So I'll call that m prime. But I still have to bind it over here. Um, so this binds the type variable m prime, not to be confused with the term variable m prime. So now that I've done this, I can do case of ruffle, and that leads to ruffle. Oh, that didn't work. I was actually expecting that to work. Oh, haha. So that was only one step. Now I need to use my work. I need to use uh, commutativity recursively or inductively, sort of the same thing. Um, so now I do case plus com. Uh, oh, order doesn't matter here, does it? Haha. -ha. Uh, m prime and n of ruffle goes to ruffle. Hooray. OK, so now I've proved plus is commutative, and I've proved that if I have um, m plus n equals 0, then n equals 0. And so now I can do this thing again. And let's see, could not deduce m equals 0 from m plus n equals 0. Well, that's no problem, um, because what do I what do I want to do? I want to call m plus n 0, but I want to prove this about n. So I need to flip the m plus n first. So, so I'm going to do case plus com. Um, oh, I need the singletons of both n and m. Oh dear, this might be why things don't work out, right? Because I can't know what m and n is until after I've finished splitting everything. Um, so we see here that my approach isn't going to work out because m and n are sort of the outputs. But to do this commutativity proof, I need it to be the I need them to be the inputs. If I really wanted to continue. What I could do is I could use span to compute the correct output um, using lists, essentially, and then go back and, and prove it. Hmm. That's kind of tempting, but I don't want to get distracted again. Let's, let's go back to my main thing. And instead, we're going to define a custom GADT for describing this output. So I'm going to keep the work that I've done up there. There's nothing wrong with those proofs, but I don't think I'll need them in the end. Um, so I'm going to call this a plus vec. And let's see. So I wanted to find data, or this is going to be type plus vec, and it's going to be in. It's going to be indexed by a natural, and the type of elements, and it's going to be a type. Um, and so let's see. A plus vec is going to take some n and some a, and here, what I really want to store in one of these plus vecs is actually a pair of vectors such that the sum of the vectors equals this index. So I can say that by writing vec ma and vec pa, and this will result in vec m plus pa. And so that means that this result 
index is actually the index that I specify up here. So it's saying that the index I specify is going to be the sum of the indices or the lengths rather of the two component vectors. Now I can write the type of span. Um, let's keep that, well, we'll just put undefined here for now. And then this result, instead of being this normal pair, is going to be one of these plus vec n a. Oh, and my input is now just going to be n. Okay, so after quite a bit of work there, let's see, does that compile? Oh, no, it doesn't. Um, mook plus vec, uh, blah, 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 blah. Oh, that's because, of course, this has to return a plus vec, not a vec. Okay, okay, one module loaded. Excellent. Um, so here, oh, it's quite right. P is not going to be used in this case. And now what I want to return, well, it's going to be one of these plus vex of two empty things. Does that work? Yes, it does. But the pattern match is non-exhaustive. Um, OK, so now I have to do the other case. So here I'm going to get a sum predicate P. And now I have x cons x's. And now what am I going to do? Let me think here. So it sort of depends on whether px holds, doesn't it? So if px holds, then I'm going to do the recursive thing. So let's do case span of px's of, and then I'm going to get a plus vec out, and then this, these are going to be the trues, and then these are going to be the others, and I want to append one to the trues. Let's just see if this works, because x indeed was um, uh, it matched the predicate. So I'm going to put this on the trues and then keep the others untouched. Something tells me something's wrong. Oh, that compiled. Does it, does it, does it actually have the correct behavior? Um, yes, I think it does. That's convenient. Otherwise, in this case, well, now I don't need to do anything recursive. I'm just going to, if, if the first element doesn't match, then I just throw everything into the others. So this is just going to be a plus vec of nil and x cons x's. Does that work? Wow, it did. That was easy. Sort of surprised. Um, but what we see here is that we have to define this extra plus vec in order to, to capture our invariants. Um, I think we'll leave it there for now. I hope you've enjoyed this video and this whole series. Um, there's many more functions to try out here. I'm very happy to have people email or, or otherwise contact me. Probably better to maybe uh, you could post an issue if you want against this repo. That way other people can see your work instead of just email. Uh, I think it's better to do this out in public. Um, but I, uh, I hope this has been informative and fun. And next week, on to new topics. I think next week might be some performance debugging just to whet your appetite. Thanks very much for watching. Bye.